All right, guys, so I'm troubleshooting the BMW E32 750. I have the cluster out. Um, and the crazy thing is I printed out a lot of wiring schematics and things like that. The only thing is, yeah, I'm still trying to sh troubleshoot this problem uh, with only 1500 RPMs and no power whatsoever. So what I think is there's like, th on this cluster has an EML light and this car has EML module and it's not, the EML light is not coming on. So I think that's the problem. So I'm focusing on that right now. So I tore everything apart here. As you can see, the cluster is out in. I didn't take out the steering wheel. I just lowered the steering column a little bit, um, removed two bolts. And um, here's the cluster uh, wiring schematic. So we have two main fuses. One is 17, one is 20. Uh, and those two fuses feed power to the instrument cluster uh, and also this EML light. And as you can see, it comes to number 12 and 13, so we'll have to check power on those. And uh, then the power comes out, has to come out from pin 16. As you can see, I, I'm not worried about the pin 17 because that's for the 735 cars. This is 750 IL, so I'm worried about the 16, uh, pin 16. And this pin 16 is right there. Uh, it's one of the wires over there. The wire is gray and green. Um, and first thing I want to do, I want to check those fuses, obviously. So we're going to go ahead and check those to make sure everything is good. I'm gonna turn the ignition on. And that's like connected to ground. Fuse 17, have power on one side, and then power on the other side. Fuse 20, power on one side, power on the other side. So two fuses are good. Now I just checked these two fuses are good. There's power. And now we have to check power at number 12, which is uh, this connector, right, actually, on this side. So we're going to check pin 12 and also pin 13. They're both uh, red and yellow wires. So we're going to check those. And it's nice because they're, the pin numbers, you don't have to disassemble the connector. The pin numbers are actually marked right there. So there's like uh, 26 and then there's 13. And you can just count up and down and find your actual pins. Okay, so let's go ahead and check pin 12 and 13. I have a, a, this wire right there connected to it, so it's easier to get to, but it's this is a pin 13. I'm gonna touch it. Oops, and as you can see, we have power coming into the cluster on that pin. And then we're gonna go to pin 12, which is right below it. Let's see. Got to make sure it's got a good contact. There you go, okay? We have power on both 12 and 13 pins. And right now I can reconnect it because I'm done testing the power feed side. So we have power coming into the cluster. Now I can just reconnect this bad boy back. Be very careful, uh, the cluster is fragile. Just like that. Now we're gonna focus on the output of the cluster. So there's pins 16. Like I said, I'm gonna be just worried about this pin 16. We have to make sure that the power is coming out of it. So when I turn the key on, the power has to come out of that pin 16. And it's on this side, it had this plastic uh trim or protectant so i took it off uh, in order to get to the wires and right now we're going to test this uh gray and green wire which is this guy right there it's a pin 16 and we have to make sure the power comes out of it turn key on that's like connected to ground it's going to be a little tough 
but I have to show you guys. I'm gonna be touching that pin all the way there. And then what you see right there is that the test light is really dim. So I'm touching that pin uh, 16, which is green and gray wire. And the test light is dim. It's really dim. It should, it's not supposed to be like that. So that could be one of our problems why the EMA light isn't coming out. So I have to take this cluster apart, inspect it, and maybe possibly solder a couple of joints uh, there because they're probably 30 years old and just cracked. So I'll just focus on the cluster as of right now, guys. For anyone wondering, this is the your EML module. Uh, I just have it taken apart because I was text testing the, the wire that goes from the cluster to the CML light. And what's crazy is all it's also like an open circuit. I was doing my resistance test, uh, pin 5. Um, there's the same, literally the same green-gray wire that comes from the cluster that I just tested. And comes here and it's an open. So we may have two different problems. Uh, but first I need to double check and see why I'm having... A dim test light uh, when it, you know I turn the key on and you know that it should it should have a really nice bright test light instead of a dim one uh, so that's a concern and that could be a possibility why the EML light doesn't come on on the dash when you turn the key on all right guys I'm just gonna uh, go ahead start it up let it run and then I'll take the cluster with me home so I can take it apart and look at it Probably gonna need engine mounts at some point. We're good here, no battery light. <laughs> Reading it upside down. So I have this cluster apart and I'm checking these EML lights and I did check for continuity. And there was continuity from here all the way to another connector. Um, but I don't know if it's normal to have that amount of resistance. Uh, so that's another question. So what I'm gonna do is, I just need to manual check to make sure that these AML bulbs come on uh, when I give them power. So I'll just try to make sure that they come on and if they do then I will know that the cluster is okay. I have to look elsewhere. So what I'm gonna do, I have the battery ready. I'm gonna connect power from here to the pin 13 mm -hmm. so I'll go literally from here to pin um, sorry from 13 which is this guy it's your power coming in 13 and then to uh, this bulb you can do it also from 13 to 16 that also works I checked them already they're fine I'll just show you when you know using one of those methods but I just want to show you that these AML bulbs actually come on and they work and the cluster itself is all good there's no issues with the cluster okay so we have positive and negative they're all both connected to you know battery so i'm gonna touch this contact and just focus your attention on the eml lights you see that they come on so everything is good with the bulbs all right, so it's not the cluster. The cluster is actually all good. All right, guys, it's another day. Today, I'll be detailing and cleaning this car and also we'll be continuing to work on preservation of this car and also have to figure out, still figure out the limp home mode that this car has. I already checked the cluster. The cluster is okay. There's nothing wrong with the cluster. So we are going to go ahead and plug the cluster back in and try to uh, troubleshoot some more um, of why this EML light doesn't come on but I also want to clean the interior because it's pretty dirty and I want to preserve it with a leather conditioner uh, to keep it in tip-top shape I have all my products ready to go but 
the interior is pretty nasty actually the carpets need to come out and i gotta clean everything here and preserve it and make it nice and these seats are actually in great shape so i definitely need to preserve that 100 percent what you guys are seeing here is a total mess i apologize for that it will get all cleaned up uh a lot of wires here and diagnostics i even opened this up because what i'm looking for is i'm looking for an open circuit i found an open circuit in the eml uh, system so this is your eml module right over here this guy and i'm still on the same circuit basically um i'm still working on my eml lights not coming on when i turn the key on um and now i have the power coming out but apparently it was normal to have a dim light uh, coming out from the cluster. We've, if you guys remember, the test light was dim on this pin 16 coming out of the cluster when I turned the key on. But it's actually normal. Mm, I thought some. I thought it wasn't normal. That's why I tore apart the cluster and things like that. But anyways, right now, after that, after I had power coming out from the 16th pin, I started checking for power at this module. And there's a pin 15 and it's actually, I was not getting any power from the cluster coming to this. So long story short, I have an open between the cluster and this EML control unit. So I even started opening this to make, maybe I can find the wire because I don't have good information right now where, because there's actually like at least one and two connectors um, in between this, harness between the cluster and the eml light so it's kind of like a, a really difficult and such a hassle to actually go ahead and try to find those connectors and uh, mess with that so uh, what i also did another test is i did the resistance test between pin 16 and 17 or i'm sorry pin 16 and pin 15 so and as you guys can see once again i'm focusing only on this left side i'm not focusing on the right side because the right side is for 735 models this is 750 il um so long story short i did the resistance test the resistance test with my multimeter between the cluster and eml module and i had an open circuit so that's when i started wondering like why you know there's got to be an open somewhere in this wire but long story short i didn't find that the breakage in the wire uh that, that wire is actually not located in there i thought it would be but it's not so what i did is i just literally jumped um the i i put a jumper wire between this pin 16th and the pin 15 of the eml so as you can see this long wire it's connected to the pin 15 of the eml module and I have a fuse right here too, just in case. It's a fused jumper wire. It goes all the way to the inside of the car. And let's keep going, I'll show you. It's a little bit of a, a getaway the way I jumped it, but, and I jumped it right there. There's a pin 16 actually, where I put that metal clip. So right now I'm gonna quickly demonstrate. Uh, it's gonna be hard to see, but we have to go right over here and hopefully you guys can see the EML coming on. You see the EML? It goes out right away. Let's try that again. I'll turn the key on. And the third time, maybe I can get a different angle for you guys. Super difficult. Right there. Cool. So, figured out the EML light. And now I'm gonna probably try to start this car and see what happens. Guys, you will not believe this car is back to life. It's running. Baby's running. Now I'm gonna go inside. I'm gonna press the gas pedal. Ooh, a bunch of small guys just pressed the gas pedal, but guys, listen to this. All right, I'm about to press the accelerator pedal all the way. <laughs> that's amazing Woo. man i'm i'm happy like a little kid receiving a toy or something Woo. what you need to learn from this lesson is to never give up love your classic cars they're amazing i'm so happy 
it was just a break in the wire between the cluster and the EML, EML module. That's why, that's what was causing all the problems with, uh, with why this engine was in the limp mode. <laughs> I'm so happy guys, it's amazing. <laughs> uh, the owner is going to be back soon, so I'll surprise him as well. But anyways, right now my main thing, what I need to uh, do is I need to figure out how to put a wire. I don't even know guys, it's, it's so hard to say right now, but I have to figure out what to do with this, um, with the breakage of this wire. I probably, it would be the best to find the breakage in this wire, but I don't know what I'm gonna do. It's, it's, I need to look up the service procedures uh, of where those two connectors are located in this car so I can possibly find the breakage in the wire because running the, like a separate wire from over there all the way to here, it's just a, a hassle. It's not really a hassle, but it's kind of ghetto. So I don't know what I'm gonna do, guys. It's so hard to uh, decide right now, but the car is running. It's amazing. It's all pretty much fixed up. We haven't taken it on a test drive, obviously, but I need to figure out how I can, you know, run a separate wire or like try to find the breakage in that wire between the cluster and um, the EML module. But there you guys have it. Amazing machine. I just fixed it up. After I figure out this wire situation, I'll put the cluster back and everything and I'll start cleaning this car and other, other than that, she you know, an amazing machine. Beautiful. All right, guys, so the car is all fixed up. Right now, I'm gonna have the, uh, the biggest headache in the world probably because I need to figure out what to do with this wire uh, because we have to either run a jumper wire from the cluster all the way to the EML module, but it's pretty hard and it's kind of ghetto and obviously you don't want to run it through here. Another option is to try to find the break uh, in that wire between the cluster and the EML module. The only problem is that I had to text a couple of my friends because there's two connectors, number two and 17, and I don't know where they're located. But if I find out where they're located, I could do more testing and figure out where the break in that wire is. Um, and we're, we're gonna go from there but right now i just have the highest headache i mean the <laughs> the biggest headache was already uh, fixed we figured out the limp mode it's all fixed up but now i have to complete the fix by either running a jumper wire which i really don't want to i, I would love to find the break in the wire where it's at uh, so i'll keep digging and and the biggest thing would be and, and the best thing would be to actually find the, those two connectors in between the cluster and the EML module. So I'm gonna keep digging, but uh, <laughs> I'm super happy, guys. This car is back to life. It's fixed up. Um, after this issue is complete, we'll probably go ahead and clean these throttle bodies and do other stuff, maintenance and plugs and wires, probably things like that. So amazing. Guys, couple of updates. Uh, I started tearing everything apart right here because I wanted to see the harness and I'm trying to find this, uh, where is a break, where is the break in the wire? And uh, I narrowed it down. It's actually this connector right here. It plugs into there and it goes to your EML module. And I measured the resistance there, uh, between, uh, for continuity between um, this side and the EML module. And there was nothing on that green gray wire. And then I measured the same thing between this connector and the cluster, and there was continuity. So I'm about to show you guys. So my multimeter is right here, uh, and it's gonna be hard to show you, but you have to go to pin 17. Let's see if I can do that. That is pretty tough. Oh yeah, it's touching that. And with the other one, I'm gonna touch that uh, connector side of the cluster. Okay, so I'll have to reposition this because it's not making good contact. 
All right, guys, I just got it repositioned right there. It's touching that green gray wire with a pin and I'm gonna touch the pin 17 on this side. And as you can see, we have continuity. One more time. Amazing. Continuity. That is it. So everything between from this connector to the cluster is okay. We have nothing wrong right there. So what we have is something, a problem from this side of the connector to the EML module. To reinstall the cluster, I have to partially, I have to basically install it like this. And then and there's, there are two uh, Torx bolts that I'm retightening right now for, so I, you know, I removed them just so I could have more space to take this cluster out. I didn't want to take the steering wheel out or anything. So I'm just doing it like that. All right guys, so here's the progress. Um, here's the EML module. Here's that wire. All right, it's just uh, drying up right now. And uh, I will treat it later a little bit more with the liquid electrical tape and then I'll wrap it. But long story short, I, it was a pain. It was such a pain to do this, but I did it properly. Um, I took this uh, wire, just took the random wire and um, I fed it through the inside and here it is, it's coming out right here. And then uh, it goes all the way along to that connector. Um, and uh, wh when I put it, um, when I put this wire all the way along with this harness, uh, I put multiple zip ties all the way around. Um, not these zip ties, but the other ones under this metal piece, just to make sure that that wire stays good forever and that nothing is gonna happen to it. And here it is, here's that wire. It literally comes here and as, the, as, I, as I told you, I put multiple zip ties all the way around. And it's gonna go here, here, and then I connected it to this connector. And what I'm gonna do is, I already reinstalled here, all this stuff. But long story short, we just had an open in this wiring harness from this connector to the EML module. But I just decided to not open up this harness, you know, just leave it as it is. And I just decided to run this uh, single wire from the connector to the EML module. And um, it's gonna be a great fix, permanent fix pretty much. Uh, nothing uh, is gonna happen to this wire. Uh, and uh, what I'm gonna do, just in case somebody uh, encounters this or like starts working on this car and notices this wire, I'm gonna put a note right here that this wire goes from, it's for the EML light and goes from the this connector to the EML module. Just so people know why this extra wire is right there. But other than that, everything is amazing. Everything is about ready to be installed. I already, uh, um, finished almost finished uh, installing the cluster it's pretty much back and uh, hopefully tonight we're gonna go ahead and test drive this amazing machine after i uh, finish wrapping everything up And what's really amazing, and it doesn't just apply to classic BMWs, but applies to classic Mercedes, is that all the doors have the VIN number uh, stamp on it, uh, which is really cool. I really like that. And yeah, I just started removing the carpets and everything, and I will be cleaning the seats uh, and leather and everything first, and then I will preserve everything. And uh, it also has, this uh, car has a, like a little bit of a mold, sm moldy smell to it. So I think that maybe one of the seals is leaking or something. So I'll have to do that. But as of right now, I just want to clean this interior, make it nice and preserve it. And then we'll go from there. Uh, maybe I'll just even wash it today. I don't know. Uh, but uh, this car is coming back to life. Uh, it's getting back on its legs. So I'm super happy about that. 
and I'll do, also do the preservation to all the door locks and all the parts that are moving and hard to get to. I'll use automatic transfluid for that. You guys know me pretty well. So I'll do that as well. You ready, Mitchell? Yeah. All right. All right. She's back to life, Mitchell. So I started cleaning the interior and as you can see I cleaned this area and there's a big difference between this part and this part of the seat. So these seats are pretty dirty. Alright guys, everything is back together, reinstalled. Let's go ahead and try to start this car and watch that EML light. It should come on and go out quickly. Hey, let's start this baby up. Of course, the battery, the battery's dead. This battery's brand new too, so I don't know. Maybe because uh, we have a parasitic draw or something. Okay guys, let's try it again. Battery is, uh, battery jumper is connected. Running, huh? All right, before I give you full beans, I'm gonna let you warm up a little. Amazing machine! This is the this is the guy who helped us out today, saved lives. That brown wire saved the life of this amazing machine. So anyway, I was gonna let it warm up and then we're gonna take it on a test drive really soon. And while it's running, I'm gonna finish my detailing. I'm gonna brush or scrub these, uh, finish scrubbing these carpets and things like that. Go. First test drive after a long time. Ooh. <laughs> That's crazy. I make sure nobody. Right. Wow, shifts really good too. Oh nice. I gotta slow down back to normal i gotta slow down because we also need to figure out the brakes the brakes are still there i mean yeah, they're they good it's just them, i think that the brake accumulator in the future will have to be replaced they're the one i was telling you about uh -huh. if you remember yeah but she's doing fine 
Okay, I'm gonna go straight. See if I can get it to at least 60. Wow. What do you think, Mitchell? No, it's moving nicely. <laughs> Crazy. You probably thought that we would never fix this car, that this car would never be able to get fixed, huh? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I have more I... confidence in you than that. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I never give up. When I work on cars, whatever it is, I never give up. That's awesome. All right, we can, if you want, we can switch. You and can try brake. driving it. Yeah, the brakes are there just a little bit like spongy. It could be like I said, could be because of the that brake accumulator, you know what I mean? Right. Like it's, it's it needs to be replaced. But other than that, yeah, I mean, if you need to stop like right here, sorry, I'm gonna press hard, okay? Yeah. So like it stops, you know what I mean? So yeah. yeah. Check engine line will stay on because it could be, I don't know, it could be many different issues or things, you know. And I would, like I said, I would do a tune up on it, you know, spark plugs, all that stuff. It's probably never been changed. All right. You want to drive it, Mitchell? Yeah. Okay. Let me just back up a little bit so I'm not on the road. Let me just back up. This is what we've been waiting for. I know. Moment of truth. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Cool. Put it in the park. Oh, this car is nice. Yeah, I cleaned it all up and everything preserved it. Hoo hoo! <laughs> yeah. Alright. I can adjust your seat however you want it. Yep, sorry. There you go. I think you're not in drives, Mitchell. Okay, uh, you're in, in first. Yeah. Oh, you, okay, okay. You're because of the hill, I see. So you remember before that, we could barely go like 15 miles an hour and that's it. I, I usually, when I drive automatics, I just leave them in drive, always. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just... Yeah, it's hard to see, because... Yeah. Feeling the gears. Yeah. This one doesn't, because now I'm seeing the readout. Yeah, I think maybe because of the... The... Um, pixels, I think the pixels are something, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. You can, I think you can kind of see at an angle, but it's weird. I don't know why it's like that. Yeah, there's some writing, but... I think you can adjust the brightness too. Floats right along. You can feel the front. A yeah. Bit. A slow bit. down, Mitchell. Slow down. Yeah. So it's because it could be, like I said, the tires are trash on it. Yeah. So the tires will need to be changed. Um, or we can try your other set that you have. You know. And just a couple other things. You know. But then the major problem was fixed she's moving finally amazing Hoo -hoo. <laughs> and what else do you what do you think mitchell i'm the, very happy yeah that's the most important thing it was a smart thing yeah not to let it go exactly and i like the way you think because you never give up you know you always you know, you're patient, so that's good. That's how I am. Patience is the key. Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of patience, that's all it takes, honestly. And then um, next time, if you have the tires ready, I can install those tires for you and all that stuff. And But I'm just loving this car, you know, especially after we wash this car, it's gonna look so nice, oh, yeah. you know? It just needs a tune-up and it probably has old gas that's why it's like that but 
sweet car. Yeah. Real good job. Real good job on it. I told you, you can count on me, Mitchell. Okay. You can count on me. V12, 750IL. Last registration, April 2019. That's crazy. Over two years been sitting.